Say neighbor. You know what? Very soon. It's like I will come and celebrate with you. I hope you remember to invite me. Uh -huh. Tell the other person, say neighbor. I'm talking to you too. Uh -huh. When you are coming, come with nylon bag mm. for extra takeaway. Uh -huh. Ay, 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 ay. We don't know since of the Lord. My hands are burned. Say, we don't know since of the Lord. Anyone I touch, surely must be blessed. Say, my hands are burned. We don't know since of the Lord. Somebody give him a holy shout. Whoa! Give him a holy shout. Whoa! Ay, 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 ay. Please get out your Bible in your hands while you are standing. I welcome every one of you to this awesome moment in his presence today. Stand up with your Bible because it's the word of God. The word of God is God and you've got to honor God. It's a custom in this place to stand while reading the word of God. Hallelujah. I did not hear you. I say hallelujah. Quickly this morning, I want us to look at the book of Matthew. Matthew 15, 21 to 28. Once more, I want to appreciate the women. Awesome time. God bless you all. The Lord lifts you higher. All right, Matthew 15 from verse 21. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tar and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy! On me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with her devil, for he answered her not a word. And the disciple came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cried after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But, she, but he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Everybody read verse 28 with me. One, two, go. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wait. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Uh, turn to your neighbor say, don't give up. Victory is sure. Or oh, tell someone, help me preach. Say, hey! Don't give up because victory is sure. Tell that person, say, don't give up. Victory is sure. Winners don't quit. And quitters don't win. And I know you are a winner. Every winner shout, I am a winner. Holy Spirit, thank you for what you have started. Perfect it. I covenant, I will always give you the glory. And everybody shout a better amen. You may be seated in his presence. God bless you. The scripture we read here says, And Jesus entered Tyre and Sidon. He entered. You know, the turning point in our life is the entrance of Jesus. Hear me again. When Christ steps into your life, I can tell you, the glorious party has begun. I don't know if I'm talking to someone here today. Jesus entered Tyre and Sidon of course, it was a city. A woman came out and she was a woman of Canaan. Now, I began to look at the scenario. 
The woman needed something. So she cried after Jesus. She said, Lord, I just need a breakthrough concerning my daughter. But the Bible says, the Lord answered her not a word. Jesus did not answer her. There are some of you listening to me now. I think this message is for you. Watch out now. Jesus did not answer her. Why she thought all was like that. She got another knuckle from where? From the disciples of Jesus. They said, send her away. Why the woman was thinking, okay, I think I can press on. Jesus said, I am not sent to you, but to the lost sheep of Israel. This woman said, eh? Which kind of thing? She turned it to worship. Then, when she was through, Jesus looked at her. It is not me to take these children's bread and give to dogs. You know that way you are a dog. This woman was still hanging on. I think this message is for somebody. Am I preaching to you here today? What was the problem? That woman was, she had a problem of identity. She had a problem of her background. She had a problem of where she's coming from. The truth is that there are people here, immediately you make sure where you are coming from. People stop smiling. I don't know if somebody's understanding me. The woman was, a, it was a problem because I give example. In Luke chapter 10, 10 Luke 10, 14 said, but it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment day. That means where she's coming from was a bad city. Her city became her identity. Where she's coming from was not a holy place. It was a place that is full of wicked people. That immediately they measure their family. Everybody switches off on them. For this woman, the Bible says, where she came out from Tyre and Sidon. And she was a Canaanite. And Jesus said, no. I don't have time for this woman. Is that not a city where they rejected me? Is that not a place where they don't accept me? But this woman needed to work out her salvation. What did she do? The first thing the woman did when she noticed is that to go and check the archives. How do I get the attention of this man called Jesus? And the woman cried out, Jesus, thou son of David, please have mercy on me. Why? She understood that anything can fail, mercy cannot fail. She understands that her background may be bad, but her, her, the mercy of God can write her in. She understood. Watch it now. Watch this now. She also understood something. The code name of Jesus. Coded name. Because everyone at this time knew Jesus as the son of carpenter. Everyone at this time knew Jesus as the son of Mary. Everyone knew Jesus as the man from Nazareth. But this woman went and said, Jesus, thou son of what? Because why? It's only David that still have a seat in Israel today by covenant. So this woman went into the covenant name of Jesus and began to cry out, thou son of what? David, have mercy on me. Why? Matthew chapter 9 verse 13. It said, Jesus said, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. Are you all hearing me? So the woman knew that look, I could be a sinner. Yes, my background is bad, but I'm carrying myself to him. And so this woman noticed that after calling that, Jesus looked at her. Woman, note it now. Why she was doing that, the disciples said send her away. Jesus did not answer her. Disciples now said, send her away. But this woman still held on. You know, if you are truly ready for your breakthrough, no, the, nobody will stop you. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? The woman held on. I'm, I'm coming. Why she held on? She noticed this. The Bible says she worshipped. She understood that worship can change things around. 
Because why would she worship? Especially when she heard that Jesus said, I am not sent to the to anyone but to the lost sheep of Israel. Okay, fine. What she did not try to look. What are the lost sheep of Israel? What do they do? At least it's worship. Okay, let me also worship. So this woman worshiped. And when she worshiped, she was able to activate Psalm 21, Psalm 121. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills for where help comment my help. So what did she do as she worshiped? She said, Lord, help me. Somebody shout, Lord, help me. I don't know if you need help here. Shout, Lord, help me. I can't hear you at the back. Say, Lord, help me. All of you shout, say, Lord, I need your help. Do I have somebody that need help this week? Shout, say, Lord, I need your help. Shout it here, say, Lord, I need your help in my family. I need your help in my home. I need your help in my life. Somebody shout help. Please sit down. You see in church? Let me quickly say. How can I hold on when I'm facing frustration and yet I want victory? How? Frustration? It didn't answer me. Now I heard his disciples say they should send me away. I thought it was over and he said I, he was not sent to me. I thought when I finished worshiping we changed his mind. He called me a dog. What do I do? I still need this breakthrough. I can't give up. My daughter must not die. And this woman continued to follow. Are you with me here today? She knew make up her mind that she was going to follow or true. So, how do I provoke my sure victory? Number one, make up your mind to follow or true. Listen to me. Everyone faces frustration. Not everybody is frustrated. Are you hearing me now? Make up your mind to what? To follow or true. Because why? Your miracle may not always come the way you expect it. And it may not even come when you expect it. You know why? Because you cannot pray and also answer your prayer. So, what I notice here is, you've got to make up your mind. Because with all this, this woman kept following Jesus. She could have gone back. She could have changed location. She could have been angry. But she said, no, I will see this journey to the end. All of you hear me. I've seen people who leave church because an usher did not give the right seat. Are you all hearing what I'm saying? I've seen people who move out of church just because somebody said something against them. Let me tell you this here. Any door that has no padlock has nothing good inside. Stop wasting your time outside that door. Locate another. Are you hearing me? If you still heard me, shout, I hear you. Number two, if you must follow well, you need repentance. In verse 26, Jesus, let's put it blank. He called her a dog. She, he called her a dog. It is not me to take the children bed and give it to dog. Madam, you are a dog. You know what the woman said? Truth, you are right. <laughs> Am I communicating? Why would she say truth? Because she knew that if God knows everything about you, you can be here today, but your true self, God knows you more than you. You remember when they pursued Jesus, a, a, a woman to Jesus, they said she was caught in the very act of adultery. They expected Jesus to say things so that they can throw stone at both of them. Jesus ignored them and started writing on the floor. He started writing. Nobody will tell us why he was writing, but I will tell you now. Jesus started writing. And the time Jesus will lift up his head and he said, he that have no sin among you should cast the what was Jesus saying? Jesus was simply saying, Timothy yesterday you also went to this woman. You the other day you stole goats. The other day in your office you want goats some figures. The other day I don't know, everyone with their last sin was on the floor. So he said oh yeah, make a check if your name not there here. If your name is not here, throw the first stone. So, Timothy looked, oh boy, my name, they did. Why take no? And all of them looked, and they all saw their name, and their hand became heavy. They could no longer throw the stone. 
That's why I know every stone against your destiny is going back to send out today. I say it's going back to send out today. Lift your head and shout a better amen. I want you to sit down. So, ready for repentance. Don't let the word of God condemn you. Let the word of God spoil you to repentance. Don't let it condemn you. Pastor is preaching against me. He's preaching against me. Uh, I know it should not condemn you. It should spoil you to repentance. Jesus called this woman a dog. It was enough for her to say, damn it. I'm leaving this church now. But the woman said, you may call me dog. You know me better. So, number three, don't rely on your critics. But let your what your results cancel insults. Don't rely on your critics. Don't reply them. Don't rep don't spend your energy replying your critics. When David came to the battlefield, First Samuel seventeen, the first opposition was from his senior brother Eliab. First thing he said, "Who did you leave those sheep with? You have come here again, you naughty boy, to show up." Jesus. Uh, David did not reply. He only said, is there no cause? He turned around and started looking at Goliath. Because let me reserve my energy for Goliath. Praise God. He did not reply his brother. So don't reply your critics all the time. Leave them. When they criticize you, mean you will soon increase in size. Are you sure you're hearing me now? If they criticize you, you will soon what? If, oh my God, are you all hearing me? Are you all hearing me? Now, if anybody make you a topic, they start talking about you, means you will soon go to the top. It's only a matter of time. Nobody talk about idiots. They only talk about somebody that is going somewhere. And I know you are going somewhere. You are a container with content that is going to continent. If you are here, shout, I am here. Do I have containers that are going to continent here? If you are that person, shout, I am here. Stand up and shout, I am here. Sit down, sit down. Let me help you. So, don't reply them. You know why? Because verse 23, just, this woman was busy talking to Jesus. The disciples were saying, send her away. I'm not, look, I'm not coming for you. I didn't talk to you. I didn't ask you for help. But you are asking that they should send me away. But this woman never replied them till today. Listen, if you want to stay long in church and you want to stay long in salvation, there are people you will ignore. Did you hear what I'm saying here? If you want to stay long in church and stay long, or else you will change the whole church in this world and you go and stay at home alone. I don't know if somebody's understanding me here. There are people you don't bother to reply at all. Wait until your day of testimony. By the time you are holding the microphone, and you are giving testimony, you will not see there is result that cancel insults. If you are hearing me shout, I hear you. Send her away. What is your business? You said they should send me away. I heard you, but I won't spend my energy replying you. Uncle Holiness, sorry, sir. Dickiness, righteousness, sorry, ma. Uh, not be you I talk to now. Baba Jesus, praise God. So she did not reply them. So if you really want to go far in your walk with God, there are people you will ignore. Did you hear what I'm saying here? You will play the part of a deaf person. Not because you are deaf. It's because why? You are staying focused. And you know where you are going. If your amen can be loudest, you will get there. Jesus, I say you will get there. You at the back, you will get there. You dear, you will get there. Who am I praying for? I said you will get the end. No power will stop you halfway. I said they will not stop you. Lift up your shirt. I am unstoppable. Stop. Sit, 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 sit. The next thing, when they criticize this woman, what did she do? The next thing is she worshipped. What did I say? What did I say? 
she washed it. Every one of you don't need definition of worship. But worship is a way of telling God who he is. Guess what? He say, I know who I am, but tell me. I know I am a great God, but I need you to tell me. The last time I read my Bible, I saw, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Uh-uh. If you are a science student here, you will understand that a microscope can magnify an, a microorganism and it becomes bigger. Am I right? Something that is small under the microscope. What happened? It enlarges it. Now the question is, how can you make God be bigger? When the Bible says he seated in heaven and he made the earth his footstool. Now you still want to magnify that God. Certainly the whole world cannot occupy him. But you know what? I now I got confused early days that you say magnify the Lord with me. How can I magnify a God that is already big? And I now realize that the more you praise God, the bigger God is in you. So when you are talking about magnifying the Lord, you are talking about the amount of God you want to carry. If you are here, shout, I hear you. So, the more you know him, the more the manifestation. The more you know him, the more. So, what do I worship God, pastor? And this is where I'm going to come in so strong. How do I worship God? Because this was what brought a turning point. To worship God. In Mark chapter 5, you remember Jairus. Jairus also worshipped because the woman with the issue of blood came and she one way or the other. But before my woman with the issue of blood will come, Jairus met Jesus, a ruler of the synagogue. The Bible says, and he worshipped. And Jesus said, ah, you mean this man is ready to humble himself like this? What's the problem? He said, my 12 years old daughter is at home at the point of death. With this kind of worship, I will go to your house. Let us go. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. I'm talking about true worship. So when we're talking about worshiping, I want to start. How do I worship God? You worship God, number one, verbally. What did I say? With your mouth. That's number one. You lift up. You just, Lord, I want to thank you. You are the one that is higher than the highest. Greater than the greatest. Bigger than the biggest. El Shaddai, the big-breasted God. Who am I that you are mindful of me? If it has not been for you, now where I for day? You know, when you begin to remind God of these things, you know what happened? God says, who is this that is just giving me all the praise like this? You know why? God will not eat pounded yam. He will not eat anything. But he said, I inhabit the praises of my people. God dwells. That's what he eats. Are you all hearing me now? You begin to see God flex muscle because, because of you. I give example, Acts chapter 16. Paul and Silas were in prison. A prison should be a place where you cry. A prison should be a place of sober reflection. A prison should be a place where you are depressed. A prison should be a place where you are blaming yourself and everybody around you. But these guys threw all this thing aside. Guess what? The, 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 the chain on their hands became tambourine. Praise God. They began to apply the chain on their hand. And they began to praise God inside prison. Praising God. God said, I thought this man would, you know, what took Paul to prison? He didn't go to prison because he stole. He went to prison because he was doing evangelism. Because he was doing the will of God. So he was just praising, he said, praising God inside the prison. And God said, who, who, who are these people praising me like this? And one of the angels said, sir, in Acts chapter 12, when Peter was in prison and the church was praying for him, you sent me to go and open the prison for him. Do I go and open for Paul and Silas? God said, you can't go. He said, but let me go now. He said, you can't go. He said, why? He said, because you respond to prayer. But this one they are giving is my own food. I will not allow you to eat my food. You step aside. Step aside. There was no mention that angel came. There was no mention that there was an angel. All we heard was the prison shook. You know, when God removed one leg from heaven 
and put leg inside any problem or prison there must be a shaking that's why i know today whatever brought you here that is not of god there shall be a shaking the bible said and the prison doors shook everything began to shake the band of everyone no mention of an angel god decided to step in by himself because why they were giving him his food and so he came to that prison to eat his food hear me now all of you once in a while ma sir give god praise did you hear what i'm saying here just just praise god praise god in bedroom praise god in toilet do you know there are people that sit in toilets they cannot pass poo the thing is blocked anytime your own passes through say baba thank you thank you because i don't need a tube to pass a scritter. there are people that need tube before they can pass a scritter. are you sure you're hearing me you are not an expert because you can shit it's because god gave you mercy i don't know if i'm talking to somebody here appreciate god anyway Oh, you. Come on. Oh, Thank you. Please sit down. Let me continue this message. Are you still in church? Are you still in church? After you have given God Vaba, let your neighbor hear. Let them know who you are. Stop wasting your energy. I remember some years back, being a young pastor, I rented a house under a man, Muslim man, nice man. But one day, I don't know the person they brought, but he had a mox directly opposite my my the one speaker was facing my room directly and i began to hear because i speak some yoruba i began to hear i want to pass i say devil is a liar so what do i what he was simply say tell him to come out to so that he should come and explain to us who they say jesus, jesus be how go explain this one now nah, begin say i have a father that will never ever fail me. I, I laughed. I needed to put in music. And I began to dance. The kingdom of God is not for arguments. It's for demonstration of power. Which I want to talk. God can defend himself. By the time I begin to praise him. Now you know what he will do. My prayer for you from today. You will no longer reply them. God will help you reply. Lift your hands and shout a better amen. So what I'm saying is this. Don't spend your energy replying. Two wrongs don't make a right. Everything your wife says, you pick on it. You don't know women. Ignore her sometimes when they talk. Because she's fulfilling her ministry. Yes, I'm a pastor. I will tell you the truth. Any man going somewhere should not spend energy replying woman. Your liver is a ministry. Why she won't talk, let her talk. When she talk, finish. Honey. Honey. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You know why? Because somebody said one day that the word woman is a woman, a man that has womb man that has what? Womb. And me and you know that anything you put inside womb, it go incubate for you. 
they will bring it out bigger than you put it. I don't know if I'm preaching now. You bring it out bigger. So, if you give a woman money, she will give you food. You enter markets. You can't chew your money, but your money will bring better soup. Are you all hearing me now? Yes, Are you all hearing me? Yes, if you give a real woman money, you'll be amazed what that money will turn to. One day, you, when you are broke, you'll see your wife put her hand on that somewhere and say, Honey, take. He said, But uh, where you see him? He said, From what you have been giving me. From what you have been giving me. You know why? Because the incubates, the womb is an incubator. Because she has a womb to incubate anything. Ladies and gentlemen, with all this I mentioned, if you also give her trouble, I rest my case. I won't talk more than there. She will also incubate it, nurse it, and tell you 1963, 1971, 1998, the one you did, I did not say anything. I see hearing me shout, I hear you. All right, sit down. Let me help you with this. So, like I said, verbal praise. Spend your uh, use your energy, use it to praise him. Tell God who he is in your life. The next one is testifying about Jesus anywhere you go. Testifying about Jesus. So it's not just about you being a Christian. And in the office, in your marketplace, nobody knows you to be a Christian. You are nothing but a monumental waste. Wrong investments. God is glorified when he sees you talking about him. Are you hearing me now? Tell people your testimony. Let them know that Baba is at work in your life. Are you all listening to what I'm saying here? You remember... The woman of Samaria from I believe from uh, um, John chapter 4 from verse 4 Jesus needed to pass through Samaria I don't want to go there but if you look deeper from 28 to 30 you are going to see that the woman left her water pot the water pot she carried she's been carried around that used her to marry five men only praise God she dropped that water pot in verse the next verse the verse she went into the city. All the city followed her. What was her message? Come and see. Huh? Are you hearing me now? Uh, he told them, say what? Is this not the Christ? Come and see the man which told me. Many of you have been in church. One way or the other, God has done so much in your life. Talk to me here. How many have, have you ever told out there, come and see? You don't have to preach like me. How many have you told, come and see? Come and see. I cannot sleep in the night before, but now I can sleep. Come and see the church. Come and see. Come and see. I was a fighter, but now I can't even fight. I fight on my knees. Come and see. Are you all listening to what I'm saying here? I was poor, but now I can afford, my, I can afford to pay my bills. Come and see. I was into drug. But now, my drug is the Holy Ghost. Come and... Are you all hearing me now? In case you don't have come and see testimony, as your amen thunder, between now and tomorrow, may God give you come and see testimony. Come and see breakthrough. Come and see laughter. Come and see husband. Come and see wife. Come and see breakthrough. Lift up your hands. Come and see... Are you with me here today? See that. I just want to show you how you can worship God. So anytime you are telling people, come and see your friends in the office, you tell them, come and see. Look at my life. Like this sister, she, if she tell you where she's coming from, the thing she's been through. But guess what? It's just the beginning. Because there are so many glorious things ahead. Are you all hearing me now? All of us have come and see. 
unfortunately, not all of us know how to worship God with it. We don't worship God. We just think that church is the only place where you come. Then when you are in, that's the end. No. Worship should follow you to the market. It should follow you to your office. You tell it somewhere in the office. Come and you need to see our church on Sunday. If you see the women dance. If you see one woman. Even the woman. I used to know her. But I saw her dancing. I don't know if somebody's understanding me here. That is what we call come and see. That's how to worship God. Worship is not only until we roll in floor, on floor, on the floor on, in the church. It's part of it. But worship, true worship, follows you anywhere you go. You are a soul winner. I'm not saying go and preach like I do now. If you can, also. But what I'm saying is that tell them come. I used to be down, but now I'm up. Come and see. I have no hope, but now I have hope. Come on. Are you all hearing what I'm saying here? Come and see. Like me standing here. I was a time in my life. Fella shrine to smoke Igbo was my next joint. I don't go to church on Sunday. Because I have to be there in Yabis night on Friday. Then I spent Saturday sleeping. Then I, I'm on my way back to campus. Next Friday, I'll be back there. That's why some of my friends, I think the daughter is, maybe be, be listening to us now. Uh, the daughter is wedding. And the guy is still there, but very soon I will ordain him to be a pastor. Praise God. Because when he told me, he said, I, I, I saw him, I called him yesterday. He said, Oh boy, I, I, I say, uh, Bishop, I say, come, he say, he say, now my fifth bottle I just did now. And I say, Don't worry. When I come your daughter's wedding, I go lay hand on you. Praise God. Eh? That will be the last. Eh? <laughs> if you are hearing me shout, I hear you. I just tell you how bad it was. There's no place like Jesus. If you found Jesus, please let people hear about it. Let people hear about him. Go and tell your friends. Tell them in your office. Let someone know. You don't know what they are going through because if you don't tell them about your crisis, about their crisis, are you all hearing what I'm saying? If you don't tell them about God, they will tell you about devil. And don't give that chance while you are there. If you are still hearing me, shout, I hear you. So I want to believe God that everyone here have a come and see testimony. And this week, God will give you one. Oh my God. I say God will give you one. The next one, as I call A and B, this, this C part is worship him also with your substance. What did I say? Everything God gave to you is not just for you. Like the trees. The tree don't eat their own fruits. They bear fruits. And they keep bearing fruits. God expects you to use it to bring glory to him. In Luke chapter 8, I believe from verse 2 and 3. Luke 8, 2 and 3. The Bible says, talks about certain women. Some group of women. And many of them were healed of the evil spirit. Watch now. A certain woman which had been healed of evil spirit and infirmity. Mary called Mandaline, out of whom seven devils. Go to verse 3 and watch their name. They call their name. And Joanna, the wife of Shusa, Heros Cook. Heros Cook. The word still word there is Cook. Praise God. That means the lady walked in Heros Palace. I'm talking about wicked Herod. Though. That's where she, if you are walking in Heros Palace, will you still come to church? I don't know if somebody's understanding me here. I hope you know it's Herod that killed Peter. And I mean that killed uh, James with the sword. Am I right? I, I want you to know that Herod is wicked. Herod is the one that cut off the head of John the Baptist. And now, a woman that is walking there still remember to bless Jesus. So it's not a sin. Because we can't tell you not to walk where you are walking. But how is God feeling it? Read it now. Joanna, the wife of what? Chusa, Herod's steward, and Susanna, and many others. Which what? Ministered unto him of their substance. They start unto him. They took care of his needs. I want to believe that part of the pure linen that Jesus wore, one of them may have sown it. Are you all hearing what I'm saying? Because at, 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 at that Calvary, the Bible says even the Roman soldiers could not see the garment because it was too expensive. They said, no, let us cast lot for this. We can't destroy it. Ladies and gentlemen, the 
these women, the Bible called their names. They called their names. What were they doing? They worship God with their soft hands. What God has given to you, use it to worship God. Your children, bring them to church. Like you saw when the children ministered, they began to recite the Bible. I'm excited. It shows that the devil is going to be in trouble the more. Am I preaching to someone here? So, release your children. Bring them to church. Push them to the children's department. That's what you are seeing. The results. Children quoting Bible. Quoting scriptures. What are they doing? Their mothers are simply bringing glory back to God for giving them such children. Anything God gives you can only appreciate in his presence. Are you all hearing me? Did you hear what I'm saying here? A particular woman, very, very, very wealthy woman, she came out of the airport, so she entered her car. Some group of area boys stopped her, and they said, Mama Riri, you not go get accidents. The woman said, keep your prayer to yourself, I will not have accidents. And they stood, they went, Mama Riri, God will continue to bless you. The woman said, I'm already blessed. And they look, what do we say again? Mama Rere, anywhere you go, you will not lack helpers. Don't worry, uh, God is helping me. Uh, this area boy said, what do we do now to make this woman drop money? Suddenly, one of them say, Mama Rere, your children will not be like us. Now the woman say, Amen. Or you take money. My prayer for you, your children will not be like them. If you don't want your children to be like them, bring them to church. If you don't bring them to church, you are raising another mama. Because why you are not training them, someone will help you train them. I don't know if somebody is understanding me here. So the woman said, immediately they said, Mama, your children will not be like us. So the woman said, Amen. Oh, yeah, take it, dash the money that they wanted. They, they were happy that they got it. But the woman knew what she was saying. The worst thing. Is for he said children are like arrow. Am I communicating here? Children are an arrow in the hand of a mighty man. Guess what? If this arrow turns back against the family, what happened to the family? The arrow in the hand of the children, instead of it to be against the enemy, and the children are pointing it back to the family. What happened to that house? I can show you a father that will not live long. I can show you a mother that will not live long. Most people die not because they would have died. They died because of heart attack from their children. I want to stand here to pray for all of us. Everyone that have a child, stand up. Everyone that aspire to have one, stand up. Why your amen thunders? Your children will not be used against you. Our children will not be used against us. All of you following us online, shout a better amen. down so use what you have to what to worship him your substance your children you see your children coming to church and they are always crying keep bringing them it means that there's something that want to snatch them from you and tell that thing is a lie the best thing you can give to your Christ to your child Number one is Christ. Number two is education. Did you hear what I'm saying here? Not money. Not money. Go around Lagos. You see some houses written. This house is not for sale. It's not a foreigner who is selling the house. It's a child in that house. Somebody know how to build. Another person know how to sell. There's a place we started church some years back. Inside the Lukbeju. The man was selling the property because we rented the place and it was about selling the property I we I mean we were talking and the man opened his mouth to tell me and my wife that his mother built this house I mean about four story building or there about or three story building the mother built the house but he has not built any the only one the mother handed over to him he wants to sell my hand is lifted in the name, God will not give you bad children. I pray for everyone here today. 
you will not have bad children. Lift your hand and let your amen be loudest. Please sit down. So the only way you can do is to remember that Joanna, the wife of Chusa, despite she works in Herod's palace, she still knows how to use it to worship God. She uses the substance to come and glorify God. She works in Herod's palace. It was enough for her to backslide. Don't forget, Herod may have been discouraging her from going to church. Give her, giving her extra hour to work so that she can stop going to church. There are people that can wake up. They don't even work for Herod, but they are Herod by themselves. They can just wake up and say, I'll not go to church today. Praise God. For this woman, despite her position, she was still using it to serve God. That's C part. The D part. The D part is when you give your tithe faithfully, you are worshipping God. You are simply saying, Lord, I am not the, uh, uh, the general overseer of myself. CEO of myself. Lord, you are the one above me. Are you all listening to what I'm saying? I acknowledge you in my life. Hear me now. If I say, okay, is there somebody that loved the Lord here? If you know you love the Lord and you belong to God and you know Jesus is your Lord, I want you to stand up and jump and say, thank you, Jesus. Did you see that? Oh, yeah, see that. I got you. Now, if this is the perimeter for showing I love the Lord, some of us will not win it. Because there are many of you who can jump times 10 before we jump heaven. But the truth is that where a man's heart is, and that's where his treasure is. So if that treasure, that thing you treasure, you do business as something comes and you decide, this part for the kingdom, this part for me, this part for this, then we, that's which is called one-tenth or ten percent. And when you begin to do that, I can truly tell you that you are worshipping God. Are you all hearing me? If you heard me well, shout, I hear you. I want to um, quickly bring it to an end today. Let me leave that of worship. I'm going to go to the next one. After you have given, pray against frustration. That's number six now. I've left the worship. After you are what? You remember after this woman finished worshipping, all she heard is that she's a dog. Pray against frustration. Everyone can face frustration, but not everyone is frustrated. Pray against it because you may have given and you finish worshipping God. You realize you are back to your same situation. Hello? You are back to reality. You, you just finish worshipping God. Everything looks good. You are sure that the job will drop in your hand. That the money will drop in your hand on Monday. On that Monday only to hear that the person has traveled. When is he coming back? I don't know when. But I, anyway, I, I worship God in church. I gave my one tenth. I gave my tithe. I even supported the church. I thought that this thing. Hey, ladies and gentlemen. After you have given ask God to help your faith. Did you hear what I'm saying here? Because without faith, you can't go far in Christianity. Faith is not because somebody got it first. True faith is you didn't get it, you are still worshipping. That's true faith. You are still giving. You are still doing what you are doing. That's the true faith. So, ask God to help your faith. Ask him. That's one of the ways you can avoid frustration because whether you like it or not, it's going to stare at you. Go to look as if it's coming. But ask God for that grace and mercy. If you still heard me here, why not shout, I hear you. This woman finished worshipping God. All she heard is, hey, woman, you are a dog. How do I handle that? It means that I just need grace. Finally, as I ran up, This woman, the next thing Jesus will say is, I cannot throw the, the children's meat to what? To dogs. 
how do I give the children's meat to dog? Madam, you ask me. You are saying I should give you this blessing. How do I give the children's meat to dog? In other words, madam, you are a dog. It was enough for the woman to say, eh, hey, Jesus, I don't know saying I saw you being insult person. No problem. Carry your, carry your miracle go. Go your way, I go my way. The woman stood. Huh? You made the Lord calling me dog? And she said something. The scripture just said, she said, truth. You are right. You are right. But she didn't end just, you are right. She said, even the dogs, they have access to crumbs that fall from the table. Ha! Ah, what a faith. Did you get this? Even dogs, the woman was, the woman was just saying, there must be room for miracle for me. If I cannot get the one on the table, the one on the floor. Because the crumbs from God is better than the meat from Satan. The crumbs on the ground from God is better than the meat on Satan's table. The woman said, Master, I don't care. What is crumbs and is from your table? I'm ready to take it. Jesus looked around and said, Wow, come on. I've not seen such faith. I did all for this woman to go. And she didn't go. I did all for this woman to leave me alone. And she's not leaving me. Woman, your deal is done. Your faith has done it. Ladies and gentlemen, let me say, tell you this here. Christianity is a journey. And the journey sometimes can be very rough. But get ready to, all you just need to do when you get to church, fasten your seatbelt. Don't expect everything to go the way you expect it. After prayer, there are times you will leave church, you are faced with reality. Did you hear what I'm saying here? You, we all dance, you see all these women dancing here now, am I right? Everybody dance now, dance, dance. And they go and say, you open post, food, nothing. They check account, nothing. The last meet when they post, I don't know who it is. <laughs> but I left one meet in this spot. Who took it? Reality don't come. Auntie, am I shake Don't cuss. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? That will be say, I will cuss. So if I don't know, who take this meat. Reality. Or your car that is walking, suddenly stop walking. Or your way going, brand new car breaks down on top Melan Bridge. Say, but I serviced this car yesterday. What happened? That's reality. You are pulling your suit. You are jacking up tire. You are wondering. Satan will say, you see, if God is alive, if God is there, why will he allow your vehicle to break down? If God is there, why will he allow the last meeting pot to disappear? All these things is the reality of life. That's why you must make up your mind. Did you hear what I'm saying here? Make up what? I have. I grew up under a, a senior minister in this land, and he knows me. That there is nothing that you ask for in the kingdom. I go all the way out, making sure I get it across. And one of the branch I was privileged to to be under as a pastor, not as a pastor, but I was a pastor just under another pastor. This pastor, I could tell you, I senior him with about ten years. But you need to see me reverence my pastor. With 10 years, pastor, I reverence him. I, I dare not look at him eyeball to eyeball. I reverence him. I, I won't look at the age because there are age mates, there are no grace mates. So I, I, I reverence this man of God. And so in that branch, God was using me to supply everything, almost everything. They need this. I've gone doing business, I bring it. I kept doing it. But in the course of doing it, some group of people began to gossip about me, carrying wrong information to him. And being a, a young man without a mature mind, he took side with them against me. Me, that is the person. He never consulted me. So while I was there that day, I was in the church, frustrated. I stood there. I said, the devil is a liar. I'm done. Let me just be here. I'm not going to be part of whatever is happening here again. Ladies and gentlemen. So, our father in the Lord then came. And he stood on the altar. He was calling people to come and support. Usually, I would be the first that would jump out. He looked at my side. It's like, um, and he looked at it. He said, Ben, 
this is not you. What is happening? It's like the demon left me. I stepped out. Hear me. Don't let anyone put you down. Let me explain. I will show you one scripture that will help all of you. Are you ready for this scripture? Are you ready for it? If the scripture is a little bit rough, don't serve God with bitterness. Oh. Serve God with joy. Do what you are doing for God. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 47. He said, because thou serveth not the Lord with joy and gladness. Please put it on. Deuteronomy chapter, thank you, everybody want to go. Because thou serveth not the Lord with what? Joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things go ahead. Therefore, shall thou serve thy enemy. You will not serve your enemy. Watch it now. Uh -huh. Which, which the Lord? Did you see? This say which Satan? Who is bringing it? Who is hindering you now? So and you know you can't bind God. Which the Lord? He, assuming we say which Satan? Then I say I can bind Satan. You can't bind God. He said, therefore, shall decide our enemy. Which the Lord shall stand against thee in hunger, in thirst, in nakedness, in want of all things, and put a yoke upon Ayakamasanda. I pray for somebody here. Every yoke today we command it broken. Hear me. What am I saying this year? Don't expect everyone to make you happy. There are people, their assignment is to make you sad. The assignment is to make you say, I want to stop going to church. Have you not seen yourself? You carry your Bible, you want to start coming to church. Your relation break quarrel with you. Within that quarrel, say, We'll stay this house, we'll dig up. I bet you Bible there. Next Sunday, I will go. Let's fight this thing out. If I were you, you should know. We are not ignorance. So, remember to serve God with joy. Anything God gives you is not yours. He has his stake in it. That's why you keep inhaling oxygen. Bring out carbon dioxide. That's why I'm perspirating now. I'm sweating because I drank water. If the day your body retains everything, that means you're not well. You don't hear what I'm saying here. The day your body retains, you eat food. The food is so sweet. Say, man, I don't go to the toilet. Come on. Stay there. I won't go to the toilet. Oh, this food, that, me, I'll come shit. No way. This food is too sweet. Can I tell you something? Eh? You're well in Jesus' name. I don't know if somebody's understanding what I'm saying here. God never gave man all. God never gave man all. It's a principle that God has put in place. Look at me sweating now because I drank water. You are going to urinate today because you drank water. You are going to go to the toilet because you ate food. And sometimes that same excreta goes back to the river. The fish will eat it and you will eat the fish. So God has put some laws in place. Cheating the law means you are saying fish to not manifest. Are you all listening to what I'm trying to say? That's why some people are poor until they learn what I am trying to say now. God governs this whole world with principle. There are principles he has put in place. Don't retain it. Say, well, ah, I don't want sweat. Uh -uh. You don't want sweat after you drink water. You go sweat. Oh. Are you all hearing what I'm saying? Now, if you watch yourself now, if you cannot sweat, go and check, go and meet doctor or call, let me pray for you. I'm talking to you here. If you see that, no matter how you work hard, you don't sweat. You don't know, man. Praise God. You need help. So, God put some laws in place. Look at yourself and look at what God is saying. The kingdom is the same way. Where you realize that everything about you is not you. There's a percentage that you must give back for things to continue to be blows on me. Lift your hands up, everybody. Marabaku Santa Yaba. Sunday. Can you lift up your hand, everybody, and shout it? Say, Father. Father. I can hear. Say, Father. Father. I am taking my place. place. Shout it. Say, from today. From today. I, have I have decided to take my place. Take my place. Nothing will stop me. Will stop. Shout again. Say, from today. From today. I, have I have decided that I must rise again, I rise again. and I will not be stopped. Shout a better amen. amen. Let me please sit down one minute. 
What did Jesus call the woman? What did Jesus call the woman? I did hear. What did Jesus call the woman? And the woman said, true, Lord. And I began to make investigation about dog. And I realized why the woman said true. Any of these things I call may have been what the woman was engaged in. Number one, dog eats their vomit. If God, dog vomits here, because I've been training dogs, hybrid dogs over the years. By the time you come back, you will not meet that vomit. It will lick it and eat it. So also people, you see them come to church, God bless them. At the end of the day, not only did they eat it all, they even fight against the same church that blessed them. Backsliding does not mean you left the church. Backsliding means that glory is no longer. You are the one eating all by yourself. Number two, attribute of dog, prostitution. A dog can leave your gate if it's not locked and travel to Ibadan in the night. Have intercourse and return to your gate. How do you know a few months later dog is pregnant? You'll be amazed. Let me say this here. I had a dog. I was living in Benin City. Somebody saw my dog. For where? For Saple. I'm talking to you. My neighbor. Because we, I usually leave the gates open. It was in GRA. This dog wrong goes up. Wait till you go meet an unknown. Now so I see, see dog carry belly for Keto. Now my friend tell me, see I see your dog. You know why? Because we are taking the dog there before. We went there, we took the dog there. So he saw another dog there. Whom they fraternize. So one day now he say, oh boy, I want to go play away. That's how bad it could be. Dogs are prostitutes. They are not satisfied with one relationship. Can I preach now? So when Jesus told that woman, I can't take the children's bread and throw to dogs. One of these attributes may have been what that woman engaged herself in. And she said, yes, Lord, you are right. Anytime we come to the altar, Lord, I'm a sinner, forgive me. We are acknowledging, am I right? We are simply saying, Lord, you are right. So those are part of the attributes that many of us must know. Finally, number three, dogs are selfish animals. If you give a dog bone that is sweet, give it to the dog. Try to remove the bone from the dog's mouth. Your hand may become the bone later because he will attack your hand. Despite you are the owner of the bone, you are not permitted to touch it. Then my own will say, in other words, if you touch him, you are your own. Stand up on your feet. Everyone in church shout to say, my father. Say, I am taking my place. I can't hear. Shout, I am taking my place. Shout, I am taking my place. Why all heads are bow here? Everybody bow your heads. I want to pray for some special people here today. God brought you here not by accident. I have been preaching. And now I believe this is time for you to connect yourself to the grace of God that also worked for me. And you want to say, Pastor, I want to surrender my life to Jesus. I want to surrender my life to him. I want Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior. If you are that person, lift your right hand up. God bless you above your head. I want to pray for you specially. Thank you. God bless you above your head. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. The next one, you're going to say, Lord, change my life. I want to rededicate my life to you. I need a change. Lift, lift that hand up above your head. Above your head. Then number three, Lord, I need a new thing in my life. A new experience, a new testimony. Come here now, quickly. All these people, run here quickly, quickly. You make my front. life so beautiful, and as you are, you have made me here on earth. There's nothing greater than this. 
that's why I love you forevermore. You made my life so beautiful, and I see you are. You are make me yell on high. That's yes, no evil. That's nothing greater than me. And that's why. I'm Lift your two hands to him in heaven. I need more of you, Jesus. I want more of you. Jesus, the more I know you, the more I want to know. One more time to him, everybody. I want more of you. I want more of you. I need more. I need more. More of you, Jesus. I want more of you. Oh, Lord, Jesus. The more I know you, the more I want to know you, Jesus. from the true truth but I will not go until you bless me lift your two hands up everybody say with me say my father, my father I, come to you today. I come to you today I ask for your mercy, for your mercy. Let, your mercy let your mercy prevail, prevail. say from now, from now Lord, Lord I surrender, I surrender. Completely. completely totally, totally. to you I acknowledge, I acknowledge I am a sinner. I, am a sinner. I, can't, help I can't help myself. That's why I come to you. Come to Jesus, you. Jesus have, your have your way in my life. In my life. Shout a better amen. amen. The next group of persons, everyone say with me, say, Father, Father from, now onward, from now onward, I will worship you. With my, life. with my life. I will worship you, will worship you. With, my with my substance. Say, Father, Father from, now from now onward, do a new thing in my life. Thing in my life. I, will I will use it to worship you. From now onward, from now onward. I, will I will tell everyone around me about what you are doing. From now onward, from now onward, I will tell everyone about me about your goodness about your mercy upon my life shout a better amen shout a living amen lift your hands up the next thing that woman did after she finished worshiping she shouted say Lord help me Psalm 121 I will lift up my eyes unto where comments forth my help my help comment everybody lift your hands up shout help I can hear say help Lord shout I need help you know what is happening now some of you will notice that this help you are calling is going to manifest if you need him in your body it will manifest if you need him in your marriage, he will manifest. Amen. If you need him in your children, he will manifest. Amen. If you need him in your business, he will manifest. Amen. Lift your hands up. Shout help! Shout Lord, I need help! Shout I need help! Shout I need help! Shout I need help! Shout, I need help. You, know, you, know, you know, in this new few minutes, listen. After you are shattered, you need help. I will give you room to call that area where you need help. Number one help, don't forget, is salvation. Don't jump the gun. Lord, extend my faith. Because without faith, you won't stay long to serve God. I'm talking to you here. If you don't have faith, if you don't have faith, because when you live here today, you may see some reality. You are wondering, ah, oh, but I think I don't pray. 
then you need faith for sustenance. Look at that woman. She got her breakthrough, Abby. Did she not get her breakthrough? But look at what she passed through. The process of, Madam, you are a dog. Madam, I won't answer you. Send the woman away, Jare. Yeah, yeah, woman. Everything was said. But this woman head on. And she got her breakthrough. I hope this message blessed somebody. I know I didn't come here to shout to jump. I just needed something to sink into you. So that you know the reality of Christianity. Because Christianity sometimes can get some turbulence. The, 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 the flight is rough. But you know what? But it will not crash. Lift your hands up everybody. What do you do? You are praying for people. Things are happening in their lives. But in your life you are wondering what is happening. When you help people finish, they will go testify somewhere else. I say, Pastor, what do you do? Lift your hands up. What is say, Lord? I need help. Oh, I can hear you there shouting, Lord. I need help. Shut, Lord. Help me. Open your mouth, Akoda area. Lord, help me. Akoda area. Call it, call it, call it. Call it by name. Ragagagagabaragada. Yes, Lord, help. Baba, help. Baba, help. Baba, help. Give somebody here a brand new womb. Give somebody here a brand new womb. Give somebody here hope again. Give somebody here restoration. Give somebody here that restoration. Lord, help. Baba, help. Lord, help. A shot of this help. Lord, help. Rakatakaba. Azagadaba. Irregedebo. Ibrakoto. Likataya. Azotoriaba. Igato legede. Elekuta labasa. Ibrakoto legede. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed. Amen. In Jesus name we have prayed. Amen. Any department of your life where you need help. If it's in your body receive help. If it's in your body receive help. If it's in your body receive help. If you have a relation somewhere that is sick now and it's not making your joy to be full now I command healing to manifest 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 let me hear an amen like thunder Somebody here, before you get home today, you hear news that there's restoration. You will hear news that there's restoration. Let me hear a more powerful amen. I was back in Europe and so we are around Europe and while I was preaching in that church, um, a woman was there, the brother uh, was in this uh, what you call life support machine for three months life support machine and while she was in church okay life support is still okay but she heard that a young man is panting so fast that he's about to give up as a matter of fact it's one of the doctors that called her the woman burst into tears in that service just she came out the phone rang so she quickly because she saw it was a doctor so she went outside to pick it I saw a woman crying just like we're standing now and, and the woman just came around me said sir what can God do and I look at this woman I don't know what why I said this and I tell you I have never done that I say madam before this service end your brother go well Amen. Uh -uh. when I talk and finish devil is a liar I heard whether my flesh whether devil told me he said you see yourself you don't come disgrace yourself here when you foresee the brother go well then at least you don't go back to Nigeria. You see, after this service, service go end before one hour. So three, three, three months in life support machine, about to die. The brother go well. 
and I said it. Ladies and gentlemen, so I expected the woman to, I said, madam, sit down before we close this service. So she sat down. She heard her phone. I expected the woman to say, man of God, praise God, I've heard this thing. No, she's still sad, very sad. I, I delayed the service. I began to delay the service. Despite, so that I want to hear. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> if you like say it tomorrow, nothing will happen. But hear me now. Then I say, well, instead of delaying the service, okay, let's share grace. We did. And the pastor quickly said, hey, sir, there are many people here that want you to pray with them. I said, okay, fine. That means service has not ended. So I told them to be coming one after the other. So I was touching them one after the other. So I will be delaying. Suddenly, in between, I saw a woman dancing. Kapayata. You know, the, I was told that the woman is an robo woman. She began to dance. Igbiji. Layer, you know, na double nine she tie. The spine Europe. First layer first, she left it, began to dance. He said, man of God, this is what I call quick action miracle. My hand is lifted. If your amen can thunder, God gives you quick action miracle. Quick action miracle. You are coming here with testimony. You are coming here with testimony. You are coming here with testimony. If they call it fine broad, I command that fine broad to turn to fine boy. Let it turn to fine boy. Let it turn to fine boy. It's your time to testify. Anything that is bringing heartache to you, beat your child.